After a seven week mission, the USNS Mercy is back in her home port of San Diego. Good evening, happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. The Naval Hospital ship provided relief for Los Angeles hospitals to free up bed space for COVID-19 patients. News 8's Abby Alford explains how this mission was a first for the USNS Mercy. The USNS Mercy arrives back at its home port here in San Diego. The Navy says that this is the first civilian mission responding on U.S. soil. As she pulls into U.S. Naval Base at North Island, the USNS Mercy hospital ship is back in her home port after serving just up the coast in Los Angeles for nearly 50 days, treating non-COVID related patients. It was a chance for us to bring the same standard of care patients would have experienced in any L.A. hospital on board the Mercy to act as that relief valve. Acting as a relief for L.A. hospitals overwhelmed by COVID-19 patients, Captain John Roadtruck says to minimize COVID spread like that on the USS Theater Roosevelt, social distancing was in place, especially in eating areas. We actually opened up an eating area on the flight deck itself uh, so people could spread out. The commander says less than 1% of the more than 1,000 sailors on board tested positive for COVID-19 and they were removed. And ultimately, we wind up sending most of the crew off the ship into hotels to stay so they could have their own room and their own bathroom. During the mission to support FEMA, sailors treated 77 patients, a total of 36 surgeries, 77 x-rays and 26 CT T scans ranging from orthopedic surgeries to interventional radio log aboard the 1000 bed ship. At the end of the day, it's a hospital inside of a ship. The Mercy even had its first procedure, the exchange of a pacemaker generator lead. So we could get tech technical support from them without having to bring them on the ship. 61 personnel stayed in L.A. to provide support for nursing facilities. The remaining sailors either came back via bus or they stayed on the ship to prepare the Mercy for her next mission, which could be another COVID support. But I'm thankful that the men and women of the U.S. Navy are not ordinary. They are extraordinary. The Navy says that the Mercy Hospital ship does not have a new mission, but she is on a ready five, which means she'll be ready to deploy in five days if needed. Thank you, Abby. After hours of debate, the House of Representatives passed a massive coronavirus spending bill today. The HEROES Act passed by nine votes this evening. The three trillion dollar bill is aimed at helping with the economic fallout of the ongoing pandemic. The bill will now go to the Senate where Republicans and the White House have said that it is, quote, dead on arrival. Members of Operation Warp Speed, that's the Trump administration's accelerated push for a coronavirus vaccine, are confident in early progress. We will be able to deliver a few hundred million doses of vaccine by the end of 2020. That's Monsef Slowy, a former pharmaceutical executive picked by the president to co-lead the initiative. President Trump also announced there are at least 14 promising vaccine candidates so far. A coronavirus testing milestone for the county today. Officials reported 4,055. That is the most in a single day yet. 132 of those tests came back positive. That's about a 3% positive rate, part of an encouraging downward trend. So far, the county has seen 5,523 confirmed cases. Eight more deaths were reported today. They were between the ages of 65 and 94 years old with underlying health conditions. The county death toll now stands at 208. Despite the highest number of tests yet, it's still short of the county's daily goal of 5,200. Count officials are ramping up testing capabilities to meet that goal, especially in underserved communities. Free testing will be offered at the Euclid Health Center for about 70 people every Saturday from here on out. Appointments are needed and can be made by calling 211. A new state-run walk-in testing facility is set to open on Tuesday at the Tubman Chavez Community Center. It will offer about 130 tests by appointment each day. People can make an appointment for that center at lhi.care slash COVID testing or by calling 888-634-1123. There has been a big drop in crimes, including car break-ins across the county since the stay-at-home order began. Sandag released new data today that shows larceny crimes were down 25% this March and April compared to the same time in 2019. Also slightly down overall during those months were domestic violence assaults and aggravated assault. The San Diego Union High School District is changing its grading policy for the spring semester. According to Superintendent Robert Haley, the district's board of trustees voted to allow high school students to earn credit, no credit, or a letter grade. The changes to accommodate the school closures back in March and the transition 
to distance learning. Students have begun circulating a petition online protesting the change and have already gained more than 1,800 signatures. Another San Diego casino says it will reopen next week ahead of the governor's timetable for his phased reopening plan. Hamul Casino will reopen Thursday with physical distancing requirements and enhanced sanitation procedures in place. Casino officials say they expect it will take some time for people to be completely comfortable coming back. Hundreds of San Diegans are shifting gears from the mandatory stay at home orders and heading out to the movies tonight. The popular Santee drive in theater is finally back open after being shut down for the past two months because of the pandemic. News 8's Richard Allen has more on that as well as the new rules you have to follow if you want to enjoy the show. Well, that's right. Some families got here hours ahead of time. Of course, this is one of the first opportunities they've had to leave their homes and see a movie since the stay at home orders went into effect. And while there are some restrictions in place, that is not keeping these families from taking full advantage this Friday night. It's big. <laughs> while drive in movie theaters may be considered a relic from the past, in the age of coronavirus, they are clearly making a big comeback. It's amazing. It feels great. The kids need it. We need it. They need it as much as we need it. The right theater one. Providing a chance to get out of the house and get some much needed entertainment while still remaining with your household and safely socially distanced from others. To get out and get fresh air and get out of the house, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we're excited. Santee's drive in theater, originally opened in 1958, had been closed down now for nearly two months under the county public health order. Finally, coming back to life Friday night. We got here at five. So, what's that? Two hours? I'm so happy to be back. Drive in theater manager Brian Davis. I've been here for 26 years. I'm not used to taking this much time off. And while the theater is now reopened, the snack bar remains closed, although customers are welcome to bring their own food. We got our pizza. We got our sodas, huh? candy. Customers must also space their vehicles at least 10 feet apart and wear a mask if exiting their car. You know, use caution, no, no sitting outside your vehicle, stay in the vehicle. We uh, rearrange the bathrooms with one entrance in, one entrance out. Restrictions that don't phase these families after months of being cooped up at home. Kind of used to it. Yeah, you gotta, if you want to get out, you got to follow the rules. It's even better being out in fresh air so you're not as worried about, you know, all the extra germs and stuff. We'll definitely be back. Now, for this first week, at least, each movie will have only one showing per night. But judging by the excitement generated by this reopening, the hope is to expand those showings in the weeks to come. Back to you. Today, San Diego's frontline workers were honored with an impressive aerial salute. Six F-16 Fighting Falcons conducted a flyover across the county. It was a salute to health care workers, first responders, military and other essential personnel serving on the front lines in our fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. News 8 Chief Photojournalist Kenny McGregor brings us all the highlights. There's been a lot of talk about it in the hospital and people are excited, hoping that they get a chance to step outside, get a little sunshine and um, see the awesome display. You hear them <laughs> first coming. Almost a swell of like pride kind of comes over and then just watching them just kind of get lost in the moment. It was a very special feeling. I guess it's kind of what I keep going back to. You yell at them? What do you guys do? Yeah. Scream. Yeah, we yell. <laughs> what do you do? We scream. We went, woo! <laughs> The pilot 
kids were able to see us wave so that they know how much this means to us and how much we appreciate them doing this today. Quite the sight, quite the tribute.